good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Tim Cabot. Uh, I'm the president of Duralex at CHN. And what I'd like to try and do is to talk about some new things in the nautic coding world, which you probably don't know about, um, and uh, show how they're relevant to medical manufacturing. Um, and specifically, we've been working on a uh, new variant of anodic coatings. It's a new category. And what we're doing is we're converting an amorphous coating into microcrystalline structures. To understand why that's important, we need to look at a performance map of a conventional anodic uh, coating. And what we see is, is that although it has a number of uh, positive attributes, there are two areas where anodic coatings are deficient. The first has to do with corrosion resistance because the aluminum obviously is going to be very reactive and it's going to easily corrode based on uh, if there's a, a corrosive ion gets to the surface of the aluminum. And the second issue is, is that the amorphous coating isn't chemically stable. And where we see this most obviously is in Europe where people are going to choose uh, a finish for a, a case or a tray or some other medical uh, delivery system which has to go through repeated cleaning cycles. And in Europe, they're going to use higher pH detergents. And so as a consequence of that, what they're finding is the anodic coating dissolves uh, pretty, pretty readily. And so in Europe, they, the, the solution to that is to use a more chemically stable metal, like a stainless steel or a titanium or a plastic. So that's the that tells you this map sort of tells you then where aluminum is used and where it can't be used. And our goal is to show how we can modify the performance of that coating in order to open up the application space uh, where um, aluminum will be cho uh, chosen. So a couple of things we need to start with. One is, as you all know, aluminum is highly reactive, and the anodizing develops this hydrated oxide layer, and that. Um, that uh, coating has many great properties. It's very abrasion resistant. It has, it can be decorated because of the, the porous nature allows for a dye to be received. Um, but in some ways, it's an imperfect coating as well because corrosion takes place uh, where there are fissures in the um, in the in the coating, and those metal ions can find their way down to the substrate and propagate a reaction, which only accelerates over time. So unlike some other coating systems, with aluminum anodizing. It's not a, um, when, when the corrosion process starts, it will not stop until, uh, assuming that the, the environment doesn't change, it won't stop until there's complete failure. So when we think about this diagrammatically then, what we see is, is the anodic coating, I'm just sort of doing this schematically, has these fissures. And the, they become pathways for an ion to find its way down to the substrate. And so therefore, the traditional uh, approaches for solving um, uh, problems with anodic coatings are one is to reduce the porosity and the pathways, or the second thing is to introduce metal, uh, metal compounds which are going to be more stable. So these are the two strategies that have existed for 70 years, and there's really been nothing new in terms of technology in all of that time. And there are variants of this. People have introduced different sorts of metals. They've introduced different ways of being able to seal. But fundamentally, they've always been working in these two areas. And the problem is, is both of these have uh, some positives, but they also have negatives. So on the, the, the one side is if you reduce porosity, you do that through hydrothermal uh, sealing, precipitating sealing, or you can encapsulate. You can put a nylon, and you can create a perfect back. You can create a perfect barrier um, over uh, the substrate. And on the increasing the chemical resistance, you can put in more chemical uh, stable structures, or you can put in monomers and other things. But the problem is, is that the deficiencies are with the hydrothermal uh, ceilings is you have poor chemical stability. With the precipitating ceilings, you're oftentimes putting something in which, is, um, which isn't uh, Rojas compliant, which isn't a, a material which is going to be accepted in a medical world where the toxicology of the material is going to be important. And when you try and encapsulate, you have all the problems of delamination. 
and those then for introducing contaminants into the into the into the uh, into the system. So, what we're going to talk about today is the microcrystalline technology, and basically what we're doing here is we're converting the alum, uh, the uh, crystalline or uh, the amorphous oxide into partially microcrystalline structures. So maybe what we do is spend just a second then looking about why is this going to be different. I'm not sure how many of you are you study chemistry, but there's materials can be in different phases. Um, and in an amorphous phase, you have the molecules that are going to be arranged in more of a random orientation. There's going to be longer bond length. And as a consequence of that, they're going to be, those materials are going to be less chemically stable and they're going to be more prone to, solu to solubilizing. Whereas if you can convert it into an amorphous form, you can make it more stable and you can reduce the uh, level of solubility. So what we want to show here is in this schematic is how you develop uh, or you, you partially convert the amorphous coating at, uh, within the anodic uh, coating uh, to make it, um, to introduce those microcrystalline uh, structures. And here what we do is we start to look at some TEM um, images of how anodic coatings look. And below what you have is the typical columnar structure of an anodizing. And then in this transition layer is where you're doing your sealing, whether that's a precipitating sealing or a, um, a hydrothermal sealing. And that, just so you know, the, the bit on top is just an irradiant, um, is just for making the TM. It's an, um, I can't remember what it's called, irradium, I think, seal. Anyway, when you go a higher level of magnification, you see the lattice fringes in the microcrystalline coating, which are characteristic of uh, crystallinity. So this is sort of a scientific proof, as it were, that we've done something which has never been done before, which is to take an amorphous and coating and introduce microcrystalline um, uh, structure to it. Um, and as a, a consequence of that, oh, let's see if this works. This is going to be a short video where we take a uh, the microlox, which is the hydro, um, the um, microcrystalline versus conventional amorphous hard coat. And we're going to put these into a caustic, a very, it's a hot, highly concentrated caustic solution. So this is a, a failure test. And what we're going to look at over this um, uh, video is, is that immediately you have on the uh, left side gassing off of the anodic coating. So what's happening is, is that you're having the reaction prop starts immediately. And you're having the caustic ions, or the caustic is getting into the oxide, and it's starting to dissolve it, and it's, it's throwing hydrogen off as it does that. So you can see that that gassing is taking place. And what happens then is, is that process starts, as we talked about earlier, it will continue to go. In fact, it will start to accelerate. Because as it, those pathways get bigger, there's going to be more ability now for the caustics to get to the, to the aluminum surface and start, uh, does it, you know, it'll create more space and the, the coating will dissolve more quickly. So the name of the game here is why does one on the left is it gassing off and why in the one on the right isn't? And the reason is is that those, as we were talking about, those microcrystalline structures are going to be much harder to break apart. And so this video goes on for just a few moments, but what you see is, is that once the coating is compromised, there's nothing to stop now the complete failure of, the, of the, the coating. That it will go now until it's all stripped off. And in fact, this is a technique which is commonly used in the metal finishing world to remove the coating, is if you anodize something and you want to get rid of it, what you do is you put it into a caustic tank. And you can see now it's very turbid. The coating is gone on your uh, left. We'll rinse this off just so you can see it more clearly. Oh, maybe they're going to go back in again. I forgot the. But once the. Uh, this, this coating dissolves, it's nothing to stop it. So what I want to talk about the application areas is, is that 
This is accelerating something that's happening in your washer disinfectors, or it's happening in an ultrasonic cleaner, or it's happening in other places where you're, dis you're cleaning and disinfecting an aluminum part for a, a medical application. And so oftentimes what people say is if you're using something, like if they're, you manufacture a case or a tray or a module or a, a fixturing device or something that's made out of aluminum, they'll say, well, we can't use it because the coating isn't going to persevere. So in a couple of minutes, what you're seeing then is, is how by changing the chemical stability of the coating, you can make something work versus making something that's going to fail. That's all, that's all it takes. So as you see, after four minutes, the conventional is completely stripped, and the Microlox, for all intents and purposes, has its coating still on it. So what that means then is, is that we've changed the performance map of anodic coatings. We've allowed anodic coatings to perform in areas where traditionally they haven't been able to work by making the corrosion resistance and the chemical stability higher. It's still an um, inorganic coating. So it's still going to, over time, you can, you can remove this coating, but we've opened up a whole lot of performance space. So if anybody who's interested in keeping the aluminum for all of the benefit, beneficial qualities of the aluminum, they now have a much bigger range which they can actually work in without their products failing. So some of the areas then where this is going to be relevant for the MD NEM show are for people that make tools and instruments. All of, this, um, all of those equipments have to be cleaned and disinfected be between uses. Or cases and containerization, which is, a, as you all know, is an is a, a, a established trend, growing trend to replace just towel-wrapped um, uh, equipment for orthopedic procedures primarily. And then all of the traces, uh, trays and modules, handles and so forth, which are used uh, for various procedures. So then to quickly summarize, well, there's a new strategy. There's a new type of anodic coating. It's patented. It's um, it's there's been there's nothing like it. Um, it allows people to hold on to all the beneficial qualities of anodizing, but be able to have an anodic coating which is much more chemically stable. So um, we it's marketed under Microlox. Um, there's a website um, called Microlox. If you'd like to have any more information on it, please go there. Or I'd also be very much interested in answering any questions that you might have. Think about it and you would like to follow up. We're in booth 559. Um, and thank you very much for your time.